welcome to episode 35 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my podcast all about knitting, crocheting. Today we're going to talk about some plastic canvas um, works in progress that will be coming up very soon. So we've got quite a bit to talk about today. It is November 29th and I am recording today beside our Christmas tree. I thought that would be a little festive and fun. We decorated Thanksgiving Day and it was so much fun. That is one of my absolute favorite things to do is to get all of the decorations out, have Christmas music playing, put the trees up, all of the little knickknacks here and there. <clears throat> Excuse me, the knickknacks here and there. I love this time of year. So I'm going to record by the Christmas tree until it is sadly time to take it down. <laughs> I love our Christmas tree. It has such a variety of ornaments. We've of course got some just plain ornaments um, and then we also have handmade ones. There's some handmade ones from the boys. I don't believe there's any right here that I can reach. I told Eric this year we did not put all of our ornaments on the tree. I said we need a bigger tree <laughs> because there was just not enough and we have so many handmade ornaments from the boys. Um, it seems like, you know, every year in the younger years during school, the kids make ornaments. And I love to put every single one on, but you do kind of run out of room on your tree. So we do actually have two trees, um, but that one is full of ornaments as well. It's a small pencil tree. I'll show some photos of it and videos of it on future episodes. But um, yes, I love our tree. It has, we've got our police box. We got this last year. We all love Doctor Who in this house. Um, last year I got Austin a basketball hoop ornament because it was his first year playing basketball, so to kind of commemorate that. This year we got Wyatt a baseball ornament. It's on the other side of the tree over there. And then we have my ornaments that I have made. I have a few crochet ones. This is a knit sock that we are going to be talking about on the episode today. I have some finished and some that I'm working on. I have some mittens that I made. A few years ago this was a free pattern I believe on Ravelry I'll try to find it and post it in the show notes this was just out of a worsted weight yarn and they were so fun to do and yeah just lots of different things this I made this earlier this year I'm sure if you've been a long time viewer I showed it before I made this for Wyatt the plan was to make one for every member of the family and put their initial on it. Why is the only one that has one so far? <laughs> so there's definitely a wide variety of ornaments on our tree and I really love this time of year. It is my favorite. I go a little bit crazy. I get that from my nanny, um, my mom's mom. She went crazy for Christmas completely. I mean there was tinsel lining every single doorway, lights everywhere huge candy canes that lit up lining their sidewalk all the way to their house from their mailbox. Lights all over the outside of the house. Two trees. She had a small tree with the sweetest ornaments and I don't know what I'm sure they've probably gotten thrown away. Um, she passed away when I was in middle school so I'm sure over the years they've probably gotten thrown away but she had the sweetest little ornaments and her Christmas tree her big tree would light up and play music. She had a music box that connected to it and the lights would flash to the music and her house was like the North Pole. Like I just remember as a kid it was the best thing to get to help her decorate and to see all of her sweet little things that she had collected over the years. It was the best. So when I decorate for Christmas I definitely think about my nanny. Um, and I think about my papa complaining about putting up all those lights too, <laughs> but I think about her and all of her sweet decorations and I hope that one day my kids and maybe one day, you know, if I have grandchildren that they will love that about coming to our house at Christmas as well, getting to decorate and seeing Granny Kay go a little crazy decorating. <laughs> but anyways, yes, I love our tree so I thought it would be fun to record by the tree today. I've got some iced coffee today. I was really craving iced coffee. It's gonna be 70 some degrees here today. I think 71 is the high. But okay, Ravelry group information. I feel like I've been very chatty already. That's probably not a good sign. But we have the last swapless swap of the year going on right now. 
and the money is due for that December 15th and that is with Truly Hooked. If you head over to the Ravelry group, I should say that down below in the down bar you'll find links to everywhere that you'll find, you can find me, um, links to the show notes, timestamps for this episode, all of that will be listed down below. Um, but head over to the Ravelry group if you want details on the Swapless Swap. This is the last one for this year and the money is due December 15th. They will ship, I believe by January 15th is the date for those. And I wanted to show you, we, if you participated in the Wild Happy Collar Swapless Swap, you should have received those. So I wanted to give you a peek at those. So if you participate in a Swapless Swap, this is what you will receive. They come in a bag with the dyer's name, the list of collars. And these are the ones that came with Wild Happy Collar. They are very pretty. There's one in here in particular that I really like. That one right there. I think that is so pretty. I love the greens, the purples and pinks. That one is one that really caught my eye when I looked at this bag. So I am going to put this over there in my basket of Swapple Swap minis. And in the new year, I am definitely starting a scrappy blanket with the minis that I've received from Swapple Swaps. It's going to happen. I just need to decide on what pattern I want to do. Lisa that does the Swapple Swaps that hosts those, um, she's with the Happy Scrappy Life podcast. And She's been doing a Bits and Bobs blanket, and that is by Kay from the Bakery Bears podcast. I love that blanket. She has two going, I think Lisa does. Yes, two. Every time she shows it, I am like, oh, I want to start it. I want to start it right now. I want to start it. <laughs> but I have not even bought the pattern yet because I'm like, I'm resisting, and the only way to do that is to not buy the pattern because I have so much gift knitting to do, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Again, very chatty. All right, but knit alongs that we have going on. We have the Sock Crazy Cow for 2017, and that ends December 31st. And there was such a great response when I asked last episode if you guys wanted to do this in 2018. So we will be doing it 2018. So this one will end December 31st. And then in 2018, it'll start January 1st to go all year as well. We'll do prize drawings all year like we've done this year, every three months. Um, we'll do January, February, March, and then the 1st of April. First podcast in April, we will do a prize drawing for those three months. So if you want to go ahead and maybe sponsor a prize drawing for next year, just get in touch with me and let me know if you're a maker and you wanna donate some prizes for those. We also have the Cable Cal, and I am co-hosting that with Amy from Noble Character Crafts. And that ends February 1st. So if you want to join in on that and you're doing anything with cables, you can head over to my Ravelry group as well as Amy's. There are chatter and FO threads in both of those groups. And then we also have the Crazy Happy Crochet Along that I'm co-hosting with Lisa from Happy Scrappy Life. And that is for anything that you crochet. There is no finished objects thread. So it's just anything if you're learning to crochet or you're working on your crochet scrappy blanket, whatever you may be doing that's crochet, you can head over and just chat about that in the chatter thread. Please post your finished objects in the chatter thread just so we can see what you're doing and what you've finished because I'm loving seeing everybody's crochet projects in that thread. And Lisa also has a thread open in her group as well. And then don't forget we do have the Selfish Knit Along that'll be starting Christmas Eve. So go ahead and get in mind what you want to start Christmas Eve. Whips will count as long as there is still like 50% left to be done or something like that, we'll say. Um, but yeah, get ready for some selfish knitting once all of your gift knitting is done. I know I am so excited. We do have a giveaway for the podcast today. It is the Wonderland Sock Club that has been donated by Becky, who is Socks for Mum on Ravelry. And I believe that is her name on Instagram as well. So with this, you receive eight sock patterns total. They, some of them will be released over a six month period. When you sign up, you get, let's see, I'll go ahead and tell you the prices first and then we'll run down the list of the sock pattern names. So the patterns will be released individually for $2.50 or as an e-bundle, the early bird pricing, which is prior to January 1st. So if you purchase prior to January 1st, they are $12, I'm sorry, Scratch that. If you purchase prior to January 1st, they are $10. I'm sorry. If you purchase while the club is ongoing, they are $12. 
$14 after the club ends and that is the bundled price or you can just purchase them individually if you wish um and let's see I'm gonna post two photos probably over here somewhere of the two sock patterns that she sent me pictures of and when you sign up you receive Mirkwood and Cheshire Stripe you receive two sock patterns upon signing up so those are the two that you get and then as they come out on December 22nd will be the third one you receive and it is Wonderland and then the other five are Hookah Smoke, Mad Tea Party, Off With Their Heads, Duchess, and Handsome Pig and those will be released over six months. So eight sock patterns if you sign up for January 1st ten dollars that is a heck of a deal I think heck of a deal and the pictures that she sent they're totally adorable this one is a scrappy sock um, I believe that one is the Cheshire stripe and with that pattern you will get a tutorial link for a YouTube video for how she does her jogless joins and tips to avoid ladders in between needles so that is a wonderful deal I believe so we are going to go ahead and do a giveaway for that um, I will post a thread over in the Ravelry group and we will draw the winner on the next episode. So thank you so much, Becky, for sending the sock club over and for giving one for a giveaway. I'm so excited. So you guys make sure that you head over to the Ravelry group and look for the thread to enter. Next up, we have finished objects. I do want to remind you guys that for every work in progress and finished object that you see on today's episode, I do have a projects page for those. If you head over to my Ravelry, you'll find that there it has all information on needle sizes, yarns. If I forgot to mention something and you have a question, just feel free to send me a message. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Okay, finished objects. I have a few to show today. I'm gonna to reach over here. Everything is kind of spread out here. All right, the first one I'll show you, I did, this is a Christmas gift for my niece, my sister Cassie's daughter, Lily, who you guys have heard me talk about so much because I've been knitting so many things for her lately. But I made her, let's show you this one first because this might have been a work in progress last time. I did the mix and match child tap by Mina Phillip for her and I did the brim option that has a longer brim in the back. So there is that. The yarn that I used is Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK in hot pink. If you've been a long time viewer, you'll remember I did a cardigan for Lily out of this yarn and I had some left so I thought I would do a couple little matching things for Christmas gifts and I still have some yarn left so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I was really hoping I could use all that up. Maybe a little scarf or something. What am I saying? I have way too much gift knitting to do. But then I also did some mittens for her. Thank you guys so much for all of the recommendations for patterns for mittens. I ended up going with the Simple Mitts by Tin Can Knits and I used the same yarn as the hat and they turned out so cute. The pattern was so simple and easy to follow and I think they're gonna fit her very, very well. So that is one Christmas gift done. We will probably, I'll let the boys pick out um, one or two little toys for her and then that will be Christmas for Lily. The next finished object that I have is the shawl that I did for Eric's grandmother that has been mailed off. I did post photos on Instagram, but I took a little bit of a video as well. So I'll go ahead and include that here for you guys to see. Um, I finished this and mailed it off. It is the Weaver's Wool Mini Shawl by Peggy Dignato. And again, thank you so much to the viewer that recommended this shawl pattern because I think it's going to be perfect. The way that it sits, it kind of stays snug on your shoulders. And I think that'll be great. Um, like I've said before, she's in an assisted living home. So I think this will be great for her when she's sitting in her chair in her room. Um, she complains of her arms and her shoulders getting cold quite a bit. So this will be nice and it'll hopefully stay put and it won't have to be fussed with too much to keep it on. The yarn that I used, they wanted something easy care. So I used Karen Cakes Blueberry Shortcake. That was the striping collar. And then at the end, I just did a little bit of gray and that was Loops and Threads Impeccable in the True Gray Colorway. And I'm so happy with it. I don't know if they've given it to her yet. They received it Friday or Saturday. I can't remember which day. Um, and I'm not sure if they've been over to see her since then. So hopefully they'll let me know how she likes it. Next finished object. There's 
quite a few today, it seems like. <laughs> I finished the Regia Perfect socks. And these are going to be for Eric for Christmas. He knows he's getting them. He's actually tried one of them on, but I just finished them and kind of tucked them away and maybe he'll just forget about them until Christmas. I don't know. But this is the yarn that I used. The color was 07113. Once again, the Regia Perfect. I love this yarn so much. I found it online where um, on yarn.com, they had someone there. I sent the link to Eric and I was like, perfect Christmas gift because I love this yarn. I want these for myself. <laughs> this yarn is, it feels so great and sturdy and warm and it worked up. It was so fun to work it up. The way that it is, you have yellow yarn that is your marker and Artie and Carlos, um, they actually have a video on how to use the perfect yarn. So if you head over to their YouTube channel, which if you don't follow them on YouTube, you should, because I just love watching their videos. They're, I love listening to them talk and I love seeing the stuff that they're talking about. So they show how to work this on a YouTube video and you have the yellow yarn as the marker and then you start and you don't have to count your rows. You just do your cuff until the collar changes because it might be kind of hard to see that is a navy and then it goes to gray. So as soon as it switches to the navy, or I'm sorry, as soon as it switches from the navy to the gray, you start your leg until you do this last navy stripe and then you do your foot. And they do have, I'm going to show some that I've got in the mail, <laughs> but um, they have different, this is just the Regia Perfect. This one isn't an Arnie and Carlos line but it works the same. So I did these on a US one, 2.25 millimeter, um, 64 stitches is what I cast on for Eric's socks. And I am excited to give these to him for Christmas. He likes the yarn and I think they're gonna be ones that he can wear quite a bit because they are, they're, while they're fun, they're definitely more, I don't know, to me this is like a classic dressy sock for a man what this looks like. So I'm very, very pleased with these. All right, next I have my Christmas tree skirt, which is actually on my Christmas tree. So I took some video of it that I will insert here. And this was the Happy Holidays skirt and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. There will of course be links to the project page in the show notes that you can find the pattern over there. For this, I just use Vanna's Choice. And let me tell you what, it felt so good to use up so much of that yarn as the deep stash in the garage because I have so many totes of deep stash yarn out there and it felt amazing to use that up. So I am so excited about that and I barely had enough of the cranberry collar to finish it, just barely. I thought I was gonna have to buy another skein and I was like, I do not wanna do that. I do not want to go buy a whole other skein of this when I'm trying to use it up. It was close, but it is done and I adore it. I'm so happy with it. This is a project I've wanted to do for years, not necessarily this pattern. Um, this is one I just found recently, but I wanted to crochet a Christmas tree skirt for years and I just never have. So I was so excited to get this done and I love it so much. I'm actually gonna crochet one for our pencil tree that is in our entryway. It has no Christmas tree skirt at the moment, so it desperately needs one. So I went back out in the garage, found some deep stash yarn, and as soon as I start working on it, I will show it in the podcast. The one that I finished for this tree was three collars. Um, the one that I'm gonna do for the pencil tree is just going to be a solid, just one collar, I think. We'll see as it works up how it looks, if I like it or not. But I think that's what I'm gonna do. And that is it for finished objects. So now we're gonna go into works in progress, which I kind of have a few very tiny finished objects I can show you that will go into works in progress as well. So I have four of these cute little sock ornaments five right here and then I gave one to my friend Karen who lives down the road um, from the full of knit podcast so yeah I've done six of them and I have a seventh one right here that just needs the toe kitchenered and then I just need to make the loop on the top and weave in ends and all of that and it's done 
I don't know why I stopped right here. <laughs> I think I was watching TV and getting ready to go to bed um, and didn't want to kitchener the toe. But this one is done. So that's seven. And I love this pattern. So I just kind of came up with this as I went along. But they are so fast. I can have one of these done in like an hour, hour and a half probably. I haven't really timed myself, but I would say an hour probably. That'd be my guess. But I love it. I love it. So I did, I put the, all of the notes for how I made these on a projects page on Ravelry. The only reason I thought about releasing it as like a free pattern, but I'm using the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, so I can't really include that in a pattern. So I thought maybe just list it on a projects page and have that there. So I'll make sure to link it in the show notes. But I cast on 28 stitches. I did this cuff down, cast on 28 stitches, did like eight rows for the cuff, I think, 24 rows for the leg, 14 for the foot. Definitely have to check the projects page to make sure because as I've been doing these last few, I've just kind of been going and then I'm like, yeah, 24, 25 rows, we're good. We're gonna call it good. But they're just so cute. So fast, so easy. I don't normally do Fish Lips Kiss Heel anymore. I've done a few pairs with that heel on my sock, but it just does not fit me that great. But I thought for this, it's perfect because that heel is so fast. It's like, I don't really wanna mess with picking up gusset stitches and all of that on something so tiny. So the Fish Lips Kiss Heel worked great. And you could also insert like a German short row heel, whatever heel you like, of course, could be inserted there. But I, yeah, so happy with this. The yarn that I'm using, is leftovers from socks that I did for Wyatt last year for Christmas. And it is Mothy and the Squid in the Candy Cane colorway, I believe is the name of the colorway. So I still have all of this left. I must have done his socks two at a time because I found one ball and that's all that's left of the one. Um, and then I found another one. So I must have done those two at a time and split the ball in half is my guess. So I can still make quite a few of these because I got six out of the first and I that's probably not enough I'd have to weigh a sock and then weigh this I don't know how many grams or anything they take I haven't weighed them yet but I can at least get a little bit of a sock out of that but I'm so pleased with these they're such a fun fast thing and they're going to go as some gifts to people I won't say who just yet in case they watch before they get them but yeah, I just need to finish the toe on this. And I'm doing these on Knit Pro Zings, which are a new to me needle. This was my first time trying them. I ordered some from More Yarn on Etsy. They came from the UK. And they were very, I think I got, I got two, two sets of the needles. I can't remember how much they were. I think, it, I wanna say it was like $16 with shipping from the UK to here for two sets of needles. Not bad. So I'm really enjoying these. They're very lightweight, which I'm loving. I love Chalgu circular needles. Love high high needles as well. But the Chalgu DPNs, I find them, they're heavy almost. I don't know, they have a little bit of weight to them. Not that they're like super duper heavy, of course, but when you use those and then you use these, there's a big difference and how they feel in your hands and how lightweight they are. So if you've never tried Knit Pro Zings, I would definitely recommend it. I would love to try, I know they have circular needles, so I would be interested to try those as well and see, see how I like those. And I've just been holding all of the little sock ornaments in my basket that I got at Rhinebeck. And I've got some notions in my By the Lakeside pouch. That is my first work in progress and I only have a few to show you. I, I finished all those other things and then I've just kind of worked a lot on the ornaments and then been focusing a lot on these socks you're gonna see right now. I have one almost done, just needs a heel. I'm doing an afterthought heel. And these are a Christmas gift for my mother-in-law. The pattern that I'm doing is my Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern that you can purchase on Ravelry. And I really love this pattern. It is so fun and simple. Gives a nice ribbed 
like texture. So the sock fits nice and snug and it's just an easy four row repeat. It is simple, but enough to keep you interested. And it's definitely one that you can get to where you can read your stitches and tell where you are and what row you need to do next. So I did 64 stitches for these on a US one, 2.25 millimeter. When I got to the back, I think I did 17 of the four row repeats. Then I did two rows where I'm still, I continued the pattern all the way down. So two rows where the pattern was on the front and they were straight stocking that on the back. Then I marked for the heel so that I've got two rows there. I don't know how well you can see it. Two rows there from where the pattern ends to where I marked for the heel. That way when I cut in for the heel, I'm not cutting into any pattern stitches at all. So this yarn is Knit Picks Felici. Um, Captain Nemo is the colorway name. And then I did a Knit Pick Stroll, I believe that's Dove Heather. I don't have the ball band for it anymore, but I think it's Dove Heather. Very nice gray that I've used many times for socks. Many times for socks. So one is done. The other one, I've marked it for the heel. And I'm going down the foot now, almost there. These socks. So... I think I've discovered, I was doing a lot of sock knitting at baseball games for Wyatt. We live in North Carolina. It's humid. And I have discovered that some of those socks that I was working on at baseball games, my tension was like crazy. It was really loose. And I think it's because my hands were so sticky from the humidity that it was really changing how I was tensioning the yarn which is a bummer because I love to knit it at events like that. But I, I really think it was messing with it because when it's sticky like that, normally I wrap my yarn around my pinky twice. When it's really humid like that, I can only wrap it once. And I thought just the stickiness of being humid would make up for that because um, yarn would really stick if it was wrapped twice and make it really hard to knit. But... I noticed the socks that I was working on were a lot looser when I would be knitting at games. So I took one entire sock out, <laughs> this one, took the entire thing out because it was just not, I finished this one and then I was like comparing them and I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's not right. This one looked like my socks normally look and then this one looked way loose. So I ripped it out and started again and now I'm to this point. This is what's left of the little ball that I had. And this looks much better. So much better. So I am so happy that I did that. If they would have just been for me, I don't know that I really would have messed with it. Possibly. But with these being a gift for my mother-in-law, I wanted to take the time to, to rip them out. And I've got this in my bag from the Scrappy Thread on Etsy. How adorable is this? If you guys have not checked out the scrappy thread, you definitely should. Her stuff is so cute. Got my DPN cozy, needle cozy, which is kind of padded and I love it. And then also she makes little notions pouches and she has some super cute Christmas ones. So head over, be sure to follow her on Instagram because she is one that I believe she sells out pretty quickly when she does shop updates. So that's another work in progress. The last thing that I've really worked on, I did work a bit. I'm also doing some fingerless mitts for Eric's mom, um, as well as the socks. So she's lucky in getting two knit things this year, but I didn't really get too much done on those. I don't know though. Maybe I did. Cause last time I don't remember if I had one done or not. I have one done and I'm on the second mitt. I just haven't worked on them yet. My goal is to have her socks and her mitts done this week. That's the goal. That's the goal. I'm saying it here because then it really counts. <laughs> All right, the next thing that I'm working on, I do not really have a good picture of to show you. So what I'm gonna do is pop a picture over here of the pattern. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It is called the Mandala Waistcoat. And I'm making this for my sister, Courtney. Courtney is my youngest sister and she is my Stevie Nicks lover, 
she's a little my little hippie girl and I love her to death so she will love this she actually sent me a photo of this um, or tagged me in something on Facebook or something I can't remember it was quite a while ago and I had kind of forgotten about it and then I was thinking what should I make her for Christmas because I just made her um, the socks that I had talked about that were for a special lady those were for her um, yeah she's still going through a bit of a tough time I won't go into all the details here because like I've said that's not really my story to tell but she has kind of announced what's going on so I feel like it's okay to say that it is her that those were for but um anyways I just made her those pair that pair of socks so I thought what am I going to make her now and I was going through my favorites on Ravelry and I had favorited this when she sent it to me before so I saw this and I messaged her and I'm like would you still like something like this yes she said yes she would so I have started it the yarn that I'm using I'm going very easy care for this because I feel like Courtney probably does laundry like my dad and my dad shrinks a lot of things I don't think he would hand wash things I remember I'll never forget this ever because I was traumatized as a teenager um, growing up we didn't have a lot of money so if you got something name brand that was kind of a big deal because you either had to work and save the money or you knew that dad worked a lot of hours because he was a single parent you knew he worked a lot of hours to save up the money to get you that like you knew growing up like we didn't have the money for those things so American Eagle was a big deal around where I lived um, that was one of the name brands American Eagle Abercrombie and Fitch we didn't have get a lot of that growing up so one year I really 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 wanted this sweater from American Eagle so bad dad got me the sweater I wore it once yeah it was lay flat to dry when he took it out of the dryer it would have fit my sister Courtney and at that time she was probably eight I don't really remember how old she was at the time seven or eight I would say and I would have been 16 maybe it would have fit her so I will never forget that and you know bless his heart he did not do any of that on purpose he worked so much and was taking care of his three girls and yeah it's funny looking back on it now but at the time I was just like what <laughs> I wanted that sweater so bad and I wore it once and then it it was Courtney's because it did not fit me anymore but so anyways I feel like Courtney probably does laundry like dad does so that's just a guess on her personality and how I know she is I'm guessing she would not hand wash anything and it would just get tossed in the washer and dryer and get ruined so I'm using Lion Brand Mandala and I'm actually really liking this yarn it's I think it's 100% yeah 100% acrylic machine washable and dryable so soft though it's really really soft um, there's 590 yards in this when I looked it up it said it was a DK weight so it's a huge skein and I bought a couple of these because I was not sure how much I'm going to need um, here it kind of shows all of the colors I think you can probably just see it better there but I started on this Monday I think and it is crocheted I don't know if I've said that I apologize if I had not it is crocheted and here is where I am so far I am having a little bit of curling and like not really curling like kind of ruffling which I'm hoping will kind of even it out because it's not really gonna be something that can be blocked and I did it gives you the measurement for what this middle circle should be and it's at five inches mine is like four a little over four and three fourths inches so it's almost five inches and it says that this will fit up to a us 10 my sister Courtney is like she's gained a lot of weight I mean, not a lot like not that sounds really bad she needed to gain weight like all the stuff she's had going on she was like scary tiny and um, yeah she needed to gain weight and she has but she's still even with gaining the weight she's gained I bet you she probably wears a size one she's so so tiny and petite 
I did not get that lucky, <laughs> but um, anyways, so even like she's at a healthy weight now and she is still so small. So this is a fits up to a US 10. So I did not want it to be quite as big as what they were saying. And I'm wondering if that's why I'm getting a little bit of ruffling, but I'm hoping it'll kind of smooth itself out. But here it is so far. The collar has finally changed. I used quite a bit of that. There was quite a bit of that in the center. Um, so now we're getting into a little bit of a darker brown. And I am so happy with how this is coming out so far. I really have missed crochet and doing stuff like this, like doilies. This is what this reminds me of, making a doily. And I love it. So I am really happy with this. And this went pretty fast. This was a couple of hours on Monday. Obviously the rows are getting longer as we go, but I, I am really happy with it so far and I hope that she loves it. I am nervous about using the acrylic, but um, cause I've never used it for a garment before. So I don't know. I'm nervous about how it looks and the not being able to block anything out. That is what is making me nervous since it is a garment type thing that she can wear, but it may be something she just ends up wearing to the beach. Um, as like a cover up cause she's in Florida right now. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but I'm happy with it so far. And I'm loving the collars that are in it. They are her collars to a T. Now, let me flip my page here because last episode I showed you guys my Road to Rhinebeck shawl and told you to vote, to comment down below on episode 34 and vote. Should I frog it or should I finish it and give it to Cassie? Because I love the two collars, but I don't love the two collars together. So I wasn't sure what to do. And I have to say when the votes first started coming in. People started commenting. I thought for sure it was going to be frog it for sure. No, you guys voted to finish it. So there were 25 votes for frog it and 30 votes for finish it. So finish it one, which is a good thing because somebody had commented and said, maybe ruin the surprise and ask her if she likes it. So I was sneaky about it. I'm sure she probably knew because I tend to try to be sneaky about things, but I'm not so good at it. <laughs> but I sent her a picture and I was like, you know, I'm working on this. I don't know if I like these collars together. And she and like, was like, I love the collars. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll keep working on it then. <laughs> I'm not very sneaky, but so I'm going to finish it. I have not worked on it any. I'm hoping this is going to be a last finished thing for Christmas. If it gets done for this Christmas, yes. If it does not, I'm going to put it away and have it for either her birthday next year or Christmas for next year. And then that'll be one gift done for her next year. And I will be way ahead on my Christmas knitting. But if it gets done this year, it gets done. So I haven't worked on it any, but I'm just, if you didn't watch last week, this is what I am talking about. My Road to Rhinebeck Shaw is a Knit Picks Swish in Marina is this collar and eggplant is the purple. So Marina and eggplant. And I do love these two collars. I just, they're too, needed a purple and a gray or this and a gray, I think for me, but Cassie loves these. So I'm going to finish it for her and it'll be a last, not really the last Christmas gift that I do, but the last one that I'll do that needs mailed out because I will have to get those done sooner than like ones for Eric and the boys. All right, so that is it for works in progress. Now I have some mail, which there's like a bit. The first thing that I'm gonna show you, sorry for the noise, everything is still in packages. I'm not sure how other podcasters do it, but if I were to put things away as I got them, like put them in my stash, I would probably forget to show them unless I made a list, but I just keep everything in the package, put it beside my hutch. Um, and then I know, okay, this is what needs to be shown. So this, when I, I think it was when I finished the perfect socks, somebody commented and said that they found a Christmas perfect colorway on eBay. So I went on the hunt. I was on emission 
this is what I found. Now this is by Arnie and Carlos, the Regia Perfect design line by Arnie and Carlos. This, I don't think they have like colorway names on any of these, but this color number is 09136. And this is what it looks like. And like I said, I'm not sure if this is like actually the Christmas one that they were talking about that they found, but I thought that looks pretty Christmassy to me. So we're gonna go with it. We're gonna say this is Christmas. I don't know that it'll get knit this Christmas. I am so bummed about, I haven't knit a single Christmas sock other than these little tiny socks. I have got to next year be better about my Christmas knitting. I really have because it just makes for like a mad rush. And I have things like that I wanted to do that are not going to get done because I just procrastinate it. I'm such a procrastinator. So these will probably not get knit in time for Christmas this year. They won't. Let's just say that. <laughs> they won't. I guess I could make them my December socks, maybe. I, I don't know. But I love them. I'm rambling and chatting. Pretty chatty today. But I love this. Found it on eBay. I think it was like... $14, I think, on eBay. And it got here fairly quick. It actually came from Germany, I believe, is where it came from. Um, I don't have the, the thing anymore, but I think it came from Germany. All right, next, I have this big envelope from Mary Maxim. I have two things in here. So I bought two kits. They were having a sale on their plastic canvas. So the first one that I got, I think these are so adorable. They're little angel ornaments. I think they're so cute. It's called Heavenly Angels is what the kit is called. Now with the kits from Mary Maxim, you get, this is your pattern right here. It has all of the information you need. Um, there's usually, yeah, I can see it in there. I haven't opened it yet, but I can see there's a chart in there that shows you and then you get however many sheets of plastic canvas you need they're full sheets so you'll take your pattern you do have to do some counting um, and cut out whatever your pieces are for this it'll be cutting out those tiny little angels and that to me is the worst part is cutting them out <laughs> I hate it I've made so many mistakes um, but luckily if you do make a mistake you can usually just find this stuff at even Walmart sometimes if they have a pretty good craft selection at your Walmart or Michael's or somewhere like that. But these kits come with every single thing that you need. They even send you a needle. You've got your yarn. There's some beads in here and special little things that the ornaments need. Everything you need. There's even the little things for the halos. So I am very excited about these. Again, don't know that they'll get done this Christmas, but get done one Christmas and they'll be gorgeous on my tree. This next one, I am making it get done so that I can use this this year. So if you've watched for a while, you saw my kind of fall Halloween handmade items that I, I have around the house. I showed those on an episode. I had my haunted house tissue box cover that I am obsessed with. It is my favorite decoration for any season that I have, that is my absolute favorite decoration. I think it is adorable. It was so much fun to make. I love it. So I was sad to put it up. Very sad. So sad, in fact, that I had to order a Christmas tissue box cover. Plastic canvas. Yep. They had one that was sold out that I am going to keep an eye out. And if I can get my hands on one, if it comes back in stock... We're just gonna have two tissue box covers because it was adorable. It was like um, just shaped like this, but then it had a chimney coming up and Santa coming out of the chimney. It was so cute. But like I said, they were sold out and I really, really wanted to make one for this year. So this is the one that I got. And again, everything is in there that I will need to make these. So this is gonna get started as soon as Teresa's socks and mitts are finished. I'm opening this and getting it started and I'll do a little bit on it each day so that hopefully it'll be done by Christmas. Okay, two more things that I'm going to show you. Three more, I think three more things. This is from 
the gnome knitter, Joanna, and she is so talented, you guys. If you are not following her, head over right now and follow her. So she does occasionally do like a second sale, I think is what she calls it. And she does, I think they're $5. And I believe they're ones that didn't turn out. Something was off that she didn't like. But I see nothing wrong with these. So I don't know what was wrong with these ones. I think they're adorable. But here is, you order them and you don't get to pick what you're getting. She just sends you random ones. So I think that's kind of fun too. It's a surprise. So the two that I got, hope you can see those, okay? I guess I could take them out. Here's a chili cheese hot dog. I think there's onions on there too. And this one. And then this one, she just put in there as a little extra and it is adorable. Little leaf on the top and a little fall cupcake so cute I was gonna put this on a project but then I was afraid that I would forget to show it so <laughs> I kept it in the bag to show you guys now it's, I'm sitting right here because he's going on some socks or you might go on Courtney's mandala waistcoat that I'm making bit of crinkling with this one so Amber from Maker's Haven here is card she did a Dobby club and I'm so excited about this I didn't post on Instagram since it was a club I was worried somebody would not have gotten it yet and be disappointed but I ordered the yarn and the knitting jewelry so there is the knitting jewelry that came with it a progress keeper which I just love her knitting jewelry. It is so different, so unique, and it just makes me smile. It makes me so happy. Look at this. It's all different. So there are two, I believe these are 50 gram, yes, two 50 gram skeins. And then you have a 20 gram in a coordinating. How fun is this? I think I'm hoping she does more of these types of clubs because I think this is so much fun Two mismatched like a pair of mismatched socks. That is so much fun. I'm so excited to get these started. I love these. Okay. Last thing that I'm going to show you, I'm sure you all have heard about and have seen these, but if not, if you have not heard of Knit Picks or used Knit Picks or heard of Knit Picks Felici, you need to try it out. So I, I ordered two of each of the new Felici, but I'm only going to show you one of each because they're the same, but I got to get them out first. <laughs> so when I saw that they, I think I, yeah, I got an email, saw the Felici was back, Right over to Fleechy. Ordered two of every color. Didn't even hesitate or think twice. Ordered and done. And I love them all. And I order the past few times they've had them out, I've ordered every single color because I know I'm going to use them. I use Nipix Fleechy a lot for gift knits um, and for socks for myself and for Eric and the boys. They're just such fun colorways and I know no matter what, even if it's not a colorway that I'm absolutely in love with, I can knit it for a gift for someone because I do so much gift knitting. So I order two of every color because they're so affordable. I think it's like $4 and something for a 50 gram ball. So you do want to get two balls. If you've never used it, you do want to get two of them um, because they're only 50 grams. So to do, I mean, I'm sure you get a kid's pair of socks out of this. Um, or do shorties with one with some coordinating heels, toes, and cuffs. But I like to do longer socks for self-striping. So I get two of each. And then if I decide to do for the kids, I've got an extra skein. So win-win, I think. So this is hibiscus. This 
This is Treehouse, and that one got a little messy when I was taking it out. So excuse its bad hair day it's having. And this will definitely be for Eric, probably. This one is Hawaiian shirt. So fun. Spaceman. This one reminds me a lot of steamer trunk, but this has more gray tones to it. Where the steamer trunk was more brown. This is more of a gray tone. And steamer trunk was from their last update. Because if you are new to knit picks, the fleecy, um, it's a limited thing. And once these colors are gone, they're gone. They may, I know they, when they brought these new colors out, they brought some old ones back and had them discounted, but I don't think that's a normal thing for them to do. So if you like them, you want to get them while they're there before they're gone. And then in like two, three months, they'll release new ones. This is hopscotch. This would be super fun for my niece. And last one is my favorite. This one's definitely for me. Nobody's getting these socks. These are mine. This is Goth Kitty. I think this one is so much fun. Purple, pink, gray. Yep, it's mine. No one gets this one but me. All right, so that is all of the mail. That's all of it. And yeah, that's been over like two weeks. And actually there, I'm looking at it right now because I was gonna bring it over and show you guys and I thought, no, there's really no point. I placed another order with Knit Picks for some yarn for hats for Eric, Austin, and Wyatt and fingerless mitts for all of them. And those will hopefully be something I'll wrap up and put under the tree, but the yarn is pretty boring. It's just some, um, I can't even remember the colorway names right now. When I start working on them, you'll see them. But it was just some gray for Eric and Austin and then some blue for Wyatt. I had them look on Knit Picks and show me the colors that they want. And Eric and Austin picked the same one. So easy, ordered it all. Hopefully I have enough. I'll get those done by Christmas. So when I work on them, I will show you the yarns and talk about them um, and the patterns that I'll use. That's it for the main content of the episode today. <laughs> but there's so much gift knitting still, so much. I really do this to myself every year and then end of like as soon as it gets close to Thanksgiving it's like gift knitting all the time so that is that's what's going on and I'm gonna work on that plastic canvas to kind of keep me sane and for when I'm needing just a little bit of a break I can can work on that because I still have quite a bit to do I'm looking over there right now at some yarns I've got caked up for socks for Austin and uh, my sister Cassie's husband so much still but I love gift knitting I really it makes me so happy to know that I'm giving these items and that they'll use these items um, I have so many knit worthy people in my life I feel like so many people who appreciate it and love it and know the work that goes into it and they get excited about it so I feel like I'm very blessed in that um, and there are people in my life who I would not knit for because I know they're not going to appreciate it um, but I do have quite a few people that are knit worthy so Friday is December 1st and I will be trying vlogmas this year I'm going to try it this will be my first attempt at anything like this I did a little bit of recording in Rhinebeck I did a little bit of recording when I went to West Virginia last um, this past spring but Vlogmas, I feel like it's a whole other ball game. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do it every day. Um, that's the goal, that's the plan. I have worried a little bit though, not really worried, but I feel like I stay at home. Um, I'm sure most of you know that if you've watched for a while, I stay at home and my boys are both in school now. Wyatt's my youngest and he's in third grade. So they're both in school all day. Eric works days. Usually he might be going to a different shift um, here coming up soon, but he's usually at work during the days. And it's me and the dogs, of course. But I feel like some days may, like what's gonna be interesting some days? Some days are so 
just a normal boring day. Like today, if I was not recording today, I would just be doing laundry and sitting and knitting and watching TV in between loads of laundry. So I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments down below what things you would like to see on Vlogmas. Would you just like to see the everyday bits and pieces of an everyday boring day in the crazy sock lady's life? I, I don't know. So let me know what you would like to see in the comments below. What's something you would like to see throughout Vlogmas? And of course, I'll be videoing all of the holiday stuff because I feel like that's the main fun of it. But like I said, there will just be lots of same old stuff, boring days. So let me know if you're excited about Vlogmas and if there's something in particular you would like to see throughout Vlogmas. So I hope that everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving last week. Um, if you're in the States and you celebrate Thanksgiving, we had a nice one. It was just us here. We didn't go to West Virginia. No family came down. It was just us. We made a turkey, all of the fixings, completely stuffed ourselves, had leftovers for days. <laughs> we loved every minute of it. And after dinner, even before dinner, we were decorating a little bit. Um, Eric put the tree up and he did a lot of decorating on this tree, I must say. He, he did a good job. Um, and then we all helped put all the other decorations out, had some Christmas music going. Like I said, that is just one of my favorite things, decorating for Christmas. I love it. And the house just feels so cozy now. I love evenings with all of the lights on. Um, throughout Vlogmas, I'll show you bits and pieces. You know, you'll see the house and the decorations. Um, we've got the tree in here, and then I have a tiny little tree over there that doesn't have ornaments or anything, um, but it has some lights on it. Lights all around the fireplace and the mantle and lining a shelf in there and then our pencil tree has lights as well so those lights just make the house feel so nice and cozy I love lighting candles and sitting down with some tea in the evenings and I'm excited to start watching some Christmas movies I think we'll we'll start that Friday December 1st and and maybe watch one every evening or something so I think I've rambled enough for today. I apologize if I was a little extra chatty today. This time of year just makes me so excited for all the things going on and all of the gift knitting that just feeds my soul. I love it so, so much. So I am so excited to go sit down and I'm going to work on Eric's mom's socks and some more little sock ornaments because I love them so much. <laughs> So I will see you guys in a few weeks for a regular episode. There will probably only be one episode in December, probably. We shall see, but the way the schedule is gonna kind of follow would have me recording on Christmas week and that won't happen. Um, so, but there'll be Vlogmas. Hopefully every day is the plan. So you guys will have that to kind of fill in that gap throughout Christmas week and then we'll be back first of the year with an episode. But I will see you guys hopefully for one more episode next month. And then like I said, Vlogmas. So I hope that you guys have a good couple of weeks until I see you again. Um, like I said, let me know down below if there's something in particular you would like to see in Vlogmas and I will see what I can do. And I hope you're doing good with your gift knitting. Keep at it, don't give up, you can do it. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> So I'll talk to you guys again soon. Happy knitting. Love you guys. Bye.